Hello, I'm Professor Laura Manning Lee. I am going to be going over some general criteria and specific criteria for instruments. I am one of your preclinical faculty here at University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry. And this is for the DPE 8111 periodontics course. And this is the clinical portion of that course. Hello, I'm going to go over some general instruction uh, to apply to all the instruments. Uh, with our chair position, again, we're going to remember that our knee height is where the bottom of our chair would be normally, so that's a good area to find where your seat of your chair should be, knee height. And then also when I sit in that, I am going to be bumping my chair into the patient chair. That's how normally how high the patient chair should be. There's some other rules where the nose and the toes are equal. When the patient lays back, they're in supine position, their nose and toes line up. Also, our chair bumps into their chair. Headrest is back here because we're going to be instrumentating the maxillary. Okay, so maxillary. So depending on whatever instrument I grab, doesn't matter right now, but I'm going to do my modified pen grasp. Okay, we know a couple general rules about the instrumentation. Another one I want to be sure to go over is palm is up for maxillary, as opposed to if I was going to do mandibular instrumentation, palm would be down. Okay, terminal shank parallel to the tooth we're, ser we're scaling for posterior. Okay, general rule is handle parallel to terminal shank terminal shank and long axis of the tooth for anterior. So anterior, handle parallel, posterior, terminal shank parallel. Okay? Palm down for mandibular, palm up for maxillary. Okay? The other thing is um, when you're having trouble where to sit or where to see, instead of remembering all the chair positions like 9, 10, 11, 12 and 1, 2, 3, 4 if you're a left-hander is just follow your wrist. Your wrist will help to tell you where to sit. If you know that basic rule of palm up, so we'll do palm up for maxillary, okay, and then you see I can see real good here that tells me I'm in the correct position. Also my, new, my wrist is neutral. If I went to instrumentate like so, and put palm down, you can see I can't instrumentate this way. This would not be applying the blade accurately. And I would be creating a lot of fatigue in my fingers to instrumentate with my fingers. So I always want to instrumentate with by rocking on the fulcrum. Okay. Another general rule is if I, like I said, doing mandibular, palm down for mandibular, I would adjust the headrest, of course and instrumentating, watching my wrist. If I want to see the maxillary, so this would be a great position for mandibular lingual and also for mandibular buccal over here. I would turn the patient towards me. Don't forget to use that, having your patient move towards you. I would normally ask them not move their head. So distal line angle into the distal, scaling, but a general rule is palm down and rocking on that fulcrum, okay? Chair position here. So if I want to sit and do the maxillary mandibular, I can sit straight up bending forward from the pelvis and instrumentating here. So my neutral wrist helps me to tell if I'm sitting in the correct position. If I'm trying to do mandibular lingual, a lot of students try to sit in 12 o'clock to do all the instrumentating and they find that they can't see or they compensate by really bending the wrist. That will make a lot of fatigue and a high risk for carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, so always sitting where I can see best, moving my patient either towards me, you can see I can do here. And if my wrist isn't, see my wrist isn't neutral, so I'm going to change my chair position. So now my wrist is neutral and I'm in the same area. 
So always follow your wrist. It helps to tell you where to sit. The more neutral your wrist, the more correct your chair position. And having your posture more straight up, you're really your ears over your shoulders and bending forward from your pelvis is the correct posture. Looking out the bottom of your glasses, I normally would have all the PPEs on for the video purposes, we're not doing that. But we'd have glasses and mask and looking out the bottom of your glasses and bending forward to see will help. But following your wrist is number one. Thank you. Okay, I wanted to review some do's and don'ts. What we do want to make sure is that our handle is parallel at all times to the long axis of the tooth. The more our handle is parallel to the long axis of the tooth, the more the cutting edge is maintained at 75 to 85 degree angle, the face to the tooth surface, which is your cutting edge, where the face and lateral surface meet. Okay, if we have our handle too high, what happens when our handle is too high up is the back of the instrument is actually scaling the tooth where there's no blade there. So we have to have our handle down or parallel. Okay, so when our handle's down, now we should feel the blade against the tooth. And remember our lateral pressure, especially in preclinic for new students, our lateral pressure is very light. We want to treat the tooth almost like an eggshell. We do not want to break that eggshell, so very light pressure. And normally we can take the lips and retract the lip, and we have our mirror in this hand, we retract the lip like so, so we can see better. Okay, so handle parallel, and I think that will cover all the criteria on the criteria sheet for the skills assessment.